Welcome to Thought Leaders, featuring interviews from some of the best minds in the industry. Today's special guest is popular platform speaker, software vendor, and best-selling author, Curtis Gloak. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial economist and talk show host. In this segment, we're talking about how we're creating a financial profile because it matters in retirement planning, so you can get to the heart of the matter, all from Curtis's popular presentation, Cracking the Retirement Code, and his best-selling software, The Annuity Bulldozer. Well, Curtis, when I'm thinking about financial profiling I'm th and getting to the heart of the matter, I'm thinking about math and analytic spreadsheets, but I was surprised to see you, Mr. Analytic yourself, actually go down to this area of getting to the heart of a matter, which seems to me much more psychological and much more pastoral in your thinking. Getting to the heart of the matter. What do you mean by that? Yeah, this is really the non-financial uh, part, but it's a very important part of the process. You know, on average, on average we say it's 75% emotional and it's 25% the math. Hmm. Uh, I, I think it might actually be 90-10, okay? Um, and, and sometimes it's in the tenets of psychology and sometimes it's in the tenets of biology. But the problem with, with many uh, professionals in the industry is that, you know, we get so good at what we do that when we find out what the client's there to talk about, we just kind of get right to the, our story. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of set back at a conference recently where I was attending and listening to one of the speakers who talked about this topic of, Let's get their story before we get ours. And so um, I created this whole, uh, this whole step in our process called, let's get to the heart of the matter. And, and this has become a front end basically for every single prospective client walks in the door for the first time. And uh, the, the particular series of, uh, of bullets here I'm gonna talk about today really focus on the, mm -hmm. the one that says retirement's it. And so I'm going to frame it up. And so I'll just I can go through this with you if you no, like. No, please. Let's, where are you from and what was it like growing up? It's really important to actually get a little information about, you know, what's this person like? Where are they from? Mm. And what, what moves their needle? What, what did you learn about money growing up? Nothing. You know, uh, you know for, for me, it's a really easy thing. Granddad taught me three things. Mm -hmm. Taught me to hate debt. He lost a family farm in the Depression. He, he taught me to give 10, save 10, live on 80. And he also taught me the law of the harvest. So people have these mm -hmm. quick and antidote mm -hmm. stories that get you a lot of information very quickly. About give you an understanding. They, a little yeah. understanding. What's the hardest lesson that you've had regarding money? That's a really important thing. Sometimes you'll also find out that there's a threat of discontent with our current advisor, our current pr practitioner. So what is the best experience you've had regarding money? So what's their successes and what's their failures? Mm -hmm. And what would you do with your time if no one paid you? Here's just an interesting one. This is to get people thinking as you start meeting with them about what would they do with their time when they're retired. Mm -hmm. And it's not always about the economics. This is about being able to transition while still feeling meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. We call it refirement. So those are those, are those, uh, those bullets. And then is there something important that I should know about your money? And what this is about, two very quick examples on this. One is, what if somebody's predispositioned that they don't want their money in gambling mm -hmm. and they don't want their money in tobacco, what do you have for a filtering process? And have you even asked the question to even know mm -hmm. they have a predisposition to this? So they or may have morals. May have, they have something, like this, they, have something that, that, they don't want you to invest in. Okay. And you, gotta, you wouldn't know it if you didn't ask, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or what if they have four kids and, and three of them are great and, and managing money very well, but one's... Alcohol mm. and drugs, you know, and you got to do something different. Mm -hmm. And then in retirement, how much of your income is okay at risk? Now, understand, we talk about risk. Put it in the context that they can understand simply. We're talking about consumers here. Scale of 1 to 10, conservative 1, 10 aggressive. On that 1 to 10 scale, how much of your income is okay at risk? 2, 3, 4, 5. And in retirement, after we take care of the income, how much of your assets now is okay at risk? Boy, there's so much intellect mm -hmm. and intelligence that you can get by getting the heart of the matter, getting their story mm -hmm. before you tell your story. And this is even before discovery. This is just getting to know the client. Okay, so this is a front end, pa actually it sounds like a pastoral counseling session to me. Mm -hmm. You're actually pulling things out of the client and trying to get their disposition on the matter. So it's it's psychological, it's it's their mindset. Some people, maybe they went through tough times, they're tight with their money and they already went through a, probably a negative experience in life. So you walk through all these things before you even open up to say, collect data. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say that it's a little uncomfortable for advisors when they first see this. Um, they say, you know, Curtis, I don't think my clients will want to answer these questions. I had the same mm -hmm. uh, trepidation. But you get really good when you try hard 
and you practice, and the results of the connection emotionally mm -hmm. to the client and appealing to their survival instinct and that, that you're not one of the Madoffs of the world, mm -hmm. the rewards of actually getting to the heart of the mm -hmm. matter and becoming a very crafted and gifted person and helping people extract what it is that you need to know is a very rewarding thing because mm -hmm. the value of the customer, value of those clients will much more appreciate and see that relationship over time. Keep in mind, this isn't just Curtis ideology. Curtis is a major top of the table, Forum 400 producer, has a huge retail business. So we're not talking about something that's euthetical. We're talking about everyday pragmatic counseling to get to these matters so we understand the mindset and how to move on the, with the client. For more information on how you can use Curtis's revolutionary retirement strategies with your clients and prospects and expand your practice, just click on the landing page address in the video description. We'll be right back with more from Curtis Cloak. A solid web presence has never been more important to the success of your business. Introducing Agent Website Creator, provided by Creative One. Through Agent Website Creator, you can create your own personalized website and have it up and running easily with zero knowledge of programming. Choose from several designs with easy drag and drop customization, get proven lead generation offers, professionally written articles and helpful financial calculators, plus the ability to embed videos, integrate your social media, and more. Update your website anytime and show the world within minutes. The best part? It's hosted for free. To learn more about Agent Website Creator, call your Creative One sales team at 800-992-2642 or visit us online at creativeone.com. In this segment, we're talking about why creating a financial profile matters in retirement planning so that we can deal with the emotion commotion, all from Curtis's popular presentation, Cracking the Retirement Code, and his best-selling software, The Annuity Bulldozer. Well, let's talk about this. I love this slide. I heard When I heard you teach at your Thrive University, the emotion commotion. I was like, I, I, I was thinking about that old song, the locomotion, but walk me through this really quick because this is really a great slide that you manage with clients. Absolutely. But we do call this the emotion commotion. And this is a slide that I think most of us have seen. I mean, there's a lot of people using a similar you know, picture, but we call this the subliminal fear and subliminal greed slide. And it's a very you know, interesting, we're, we're talking about this in a, in a week that uh, we've had extreme volatility oh. that we haven't seen you know, since 2011, uh, much volatility. Mm -hmm. And we've gone about six and a half years since the crash of, of, of a pretty straight line up. And now suddenly we've got turbulence and we've got global concern uh, at a number of fronts. And so basically people have this, this slide of you know, optimism, excitement, thrill, euphoria, and then just before anxiety and denial, all that starts to kick in. And so we call this the subliminal fear, subliminal greed slide or the emotion commotion. And this is basically how people buy when they shouldn't buy and sell when they shouldn't sell. And, the, and consumers do this all the time. Absolutely. It's, a it's human nature. Now you do these risks and there's several here that could actually affect a client's retirement. And it's not just one or two things. I mean, you have a list here. Actually, if you look at the RACP at the American College, in that course, there's actually 18 defined. There's another course with the Retirement Income Industry Association that have 19 defined. There's a lot of risks. Mm -hmm. And it's taking key risk off the table, that's a really big deal. But the number one risk, as we've already talked about before, is longevity risk. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to take that risk off the table. I've heard you and Tom Hagna talk about how longevity is the great multiplier of other retirement risks. Yes. So this is the key. If you have problems here, it's going to affect the other risks. We just talked a, minute, a few minutes ago about uh, the, the top five fears, and that's about getting connected emotionally with the mm -hmm. clients, getting the client to think about what, what causes them things that they're afraid of. But what they're afraid of versus the things that can hurt them and mm -hmm. hurt them badly, two completely different camps, mm -hmm. really. So, so we're going to focus now on the risks. The number one risk, we've said this time and time again, is longevity. It's the multiplier of every other risk. In fact, if you look at studies that uh, have recently been done, uh, you can see that when you back test uh, a lot of these portfolios based on what the markets actually do, that if everyone died at 75, assuming mm -hmm. they retired at 65, you know, they, they, everybody be all right. 80-20 mix of, the, of equities and bonds, and they live 30 years in retirement, nobody would run out of money. But as soon as they live 10 years longer to 85, as long as one spouse lives there, 38% chance of failure. And the longer you live, the more risk of a big chance of failure. Hmm. So longevity is the multiplier. If you look at a lot of the uh, research that's being done today, people are becoming more afraid of health care. You know, the, the new law changes with Obamacare and the rising increase really haven't constrained this cost. It's actually gotten worse. 
And so it's, it's not just health care, but it's the medical inflation that's so different than inflation for all non-medical expenses. Hmm. And inflation, that's the one thing that's, that's similar. You know, people are afraid of it, but they understand it, and it's still a top five risk. But, but between longevity and sequence of returns risk, these are the two devils mm-hmm. in the details. These are the two things that are like spiders sitting beside them. And when you turn the black light on and they got fluorescent paint on their back, suddenly you see the mm-hmm. spider sitting in the room. And this is a big one. And this is something that was not a risk during the climb or the accumulation period. Mm-hmm. It, doesn't, it doesn't hurt you. In fact, dollar cost averaging is your friend mm-hmm. during the accumulation. But dollar cost average in reverse becomes sequence of returns. And you really have to educate the client. Mm -hmm. It's not about average returns. Average returns mean nothing. This is a really bad demon as far as retirement planning. And then market volatility sound similar, but they're close cousins. Mm -hmm. They're completely different levels of risk. Now, remember, this is a very important thing because you're saying, Steve, sequence of returns. I've heard people talk about this. It's been in the paper. But you manage this at Thrive University into the ground. I think you bring good detail. You unpack it so that we can understand it. And the first time I saw it, it actually was illuminating to me because it made me think, I'm not addressing this. Mm -hmm. And I think most of our advisors would love to have a really good workshop on that. So if you haven't seen his Thrive University, and if it's near your city, you should go see it. Just this issue alone on a morning session on sequence of returns could change the way you do modeling. Yeah, in fact, uh, October 22nd, 23rd in Des Moines, Iowa, at the Voya office downtown Mm -hmm. Des Moines is uh, your next shot. If if you're interested in coming, uh, www.thriveu, the letter u.net, and uh, you certainly can subscribe online. Well, for more information on how you can use Curtis's revolutionary retirement strategies with your clients and prospects to build out your business, just click on the landing page address in the video description. And for more information on our shows, seminars, and workshops, just follow us on social media or visit us out on our website. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next time on Thought Leaders. And remember, keep thinking outside the box.